All right, guys, we're going to take a look today at absolute value functions. And your target for today, your learning target, is to be able to say, I can graph absolute value functions. Um, you've seen graphs of absolute value functions. Um, we've looked at those when we've been trying to decide if something was linear or nonlinear. Um, we've been trying to decide whether it was a function or not a function. Um, these are nonlinear functions, um, but they fit quite nicely with the graphing that we're doing in this chapter. Um, so let's take a look at what these look like. You guys have also solved absolute value equations and inequalities, so you kind of already know what the equations look like. Um, but we're going to take a look at what the general form is. So it says the graph of y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k has the following characteristic. Now before we start describing those, I want to talk to you guys real quickly. Um, a, h, and k are all value, specific numerical values in that function. They're going to do um, things to the function, and they're going to allow us to help graph those. Um, so the first thing it says is the vertex of the graph. I'm going to talk about the vertex because um, a line doesn't have a vertex. Um, the vertex is what's, what can be described as a turning point. All right, um, of the graph, and it's at h, comma, k. And it's symmetric over the line x equals h. And so symmetric just means it can be folded in half. So that means we have the same thing on the left and the right um, of this line x equals h. It's going to be this vertical line. Um, notice, guys, this is the opposite of h when we look at the vertex. Um, the graph is V-shaped, so that's where we see that vertex there at the bottom of the V. And it will go up if A is positive, so if A is greater than 0. Or down if A is negative, so if A is less than 0. We're going to create a Y graph if um, the absolute value of A is less than 1, so we're talking about a fraction less than 1. And then we're going to have a narrow graph, we're going to have a tall skinny graph, if the absolute value of A is greater than 1. So we kind of have to look in, at A in two, in two ways. Um, if A is positive or negative, it's going to tell us whether it opens down. And then we ignore the sign and we just look at the numerical value of A, so that's why I have it there in absolute values. So we're going to go through and talk about things here in a little bit. Um, and then get you guys doing some graphing. So let's take a look at these three examples. It says list the A value, list the vertex, and then the direction of the graph from the equation. So our first equation is y equals 4 times the absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. So the A value is this positive 4 that we have here. The vertex, we have to take the opposite of what we see here. So because we see this as a negative 1, my h value is a positive 1, and then my k value is 3. So we're taking the opposite of what's inside um, those absolute values. And does it open up or down? This one, because a is positive, it's going to open up. Um, it looks like on b that the absolute value brackets didn't um, aren't showing up, so we're going to... I'm going to draw those in. Hopefully they're already on your notes. So we have uh, y equals negative 1 half times the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 7. So the a value is this negative 1 half. All right. The vertex, I have to take the opposite of what's inside there. So if it's a positive one, my vertex is a negative 1, but that k value stays the same, so I'm going to vertex at negative 1, 7. The a value is negative, and it's going to open down. Now, they don't ask this question here, but I want to connect what we said about wide or narrow. So when I look at this, the a value, when I drop the 1 half, the absolute value of negative 1 half is 1 half, and because that's less than 1, all right, this is going to be a wide graph. And we'll talk about why that A is going to be the 
kind of the rate of change of your function. So we're um, going to have a rate of change of one half. C, the A value is negative 5. The vertex, there's nothing in there with the X, so that means we have an H value of 0. We're not adding anything here. There's nothing to be added, so that means my K value is 0. So in this case, my vertex is at the origin. Um, the A value is negative, so it's going to open down. So if we take a look at this, the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. And because that's greater than 1, we're going to have a narrow graph that's going to be tall and skinny. All right? So that's going to be what you're doing today. Is you're going to be pulling those numbers out of the equation and making some decisions on those. All right? So that part gets us ready to do our graphing. So let's take a look at how we graph. We need to graph the equation y equals 1 half times x plus times the absolute value of x plus 1, minus 1. So my a value is 1 half. And ladies and gentlemen, this is actually going to be kind of like your slope. And we're going to talk about that in um, just a minute when we go to put some things on the graph. Um, I have to take the opposite of what's in there with x. And so because it's a positive 1, my h value is going to be negative 1. And I'm subtracting 1 here for my k, so that just stays minus 1. The a value is positive, so it's going to open up. And 1 half is less than 1, so this is going to be a y graph. So how do we go about plotting this? How do we go about getting a graph? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plot the vertex. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to graph the point negative 1, negative 1. So I'm going to graph this point. So I'm going to go negative 1, negative 1, and there's my vertex. Step number 2 is we're going to use A as our slope. So we're going to count A. as our slope. But what we're going to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, is that we're only going to go to the right. So my slope here is 1 half. So I'm going to go up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2. And I'm going to keep going as far as I can on this one. As you see, this kind of it goes uh, wide out there to the right. And then I'm going to connect this. We don't have a word problem with it. And I'm going to put arrows. And then last but not least, we're going to keep in mind what we learned. We learned that the graphs are symmetric. So we're going to use symmetry for the left side. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, one way is that if I'm going to be symmetric, if I went up 1 and 2 to the right, I have to go up 1 and 2 to the left. So that's one way of getting that. The other way is to just kind of reflect this point over there. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces from this vertex here in the middle. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm at the edge of my graph, so I'm not going to worry about reflecting that third point that we have. But then we can connect that. And there's my V shape. So keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, you always need to have that V shape. And so if you're not getting a V, you've done something wrong on one of your three stops. But that's how we make an absolute value function. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a good day.